think we're actually in the middle of that breakthrough today. Um, over the last uh, 12 to, to, to 24 months, we've seen probably for the first time in history uh, a, a convergence of uh, the technology readiness, not only in terms of hydrogen generation, but in hydrogen consumption. Uh, on top of that, you have uh, governments which are, uh, the, the policy agenda has moved on and matured, evolved significantly. You've got governments like Germany uh, during the lockdown saying that they're going to devote 9 billion euros to the hydrogen economy. France is putting 7 billion in. Portugal, 7 billion. The International Energy Agency has now asserted for the first time that hydrogen is part of the, the, the decarbonisation agenda. So the technology is now moving to a point of commercial readiness. The, the, the policy agenda has moved on and you've got big business now for the first time uh, putting significant amounts of capital. You've got the, the Hydrogen Council, which has um, evolved over the last three years, originating in Davos uh, you know, three years ago. And, uh, and, and it now has 90 of the largest brands and organisations uh, working under its banner to try and promote the utilisation of hydrogen as a clean energy alternative. So if you look at where the forecasts are moving towards, you've got an agenda which has about just under 20 percent of the world's energy being supplied from hydrogen uh, over the next few decades. And, and so I think that that agenda of, of, of not will it or won't, it, 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 it's, it's now how quickly will it actually start to penetrate the energy mix and support that decarbonisation okay. agenda that, that most economies are after. Adam, I'm going to hold my hands up. I, I, I get it. I'm hearing it all the time. In fact, I moderated a three and a half hour clean energy ministerial with 26 ministers on Monday where Fatih Biro and others really went for it on hydrogen. And I, I get it. So I'm, I'm, I'm on board. But there was a big takedown. Did you see it in The Times? I don't know. And they're saying there's nowhere near commercial red, uh, readiness. It's nowhere near uh, competing on, on a clean base as well. And I'll, I'll give you their three points very quickly. One, on present technology, it would take an onshore wind farm covering 18,000 square kilometres to produce enough electricity to create green hydrogen to power all the UK's long distance lorries. Two, blue hydrogen from natural gas um, basically relies on CCUS and whatever, which has never been successfully deployed. And three, hydrogen gas is at the moment twice as expensive as natural gas. Now, I, I get it, I'm on board, but there are some big skepticism and big problems to overcome still. Look, I, I, I don't disagree I, in, in the sense that we are certainly at the, at the, at the top of our, our cost curve and there are some fairly aggressive agendas to drive that cost, uh, those cost numbers down. I think you've got, um, you, know, you know, the UK and, and, and the Prime Minister uh, yesterday stood up, or well, virtually stood up in the, uh, the UN and, and, and was advocating very strongly the UK's um, offshore wind market. Uh, but as a complement to that, uh, saw a great opportunity for, for hydrogen in locations where, you know, just pure electricity won't reach. Uh, the electrification of the market is where we're, we're moving, the energy market is where we're moving. And so hydrogen has a role to play alongside technologies such as wind, offshore wind, solar and the like. So I, I, we're seeing it as very much a complementary technology to these, uh, to these existing, um, existing renewable sources. But, but I think in, in terms of where the traction is coming from, certainly we're seeing a lot of traction in stationary power. Uh, if you think about the off-grid power market, you know, the, the, there, is, there is no alternative. There is no electricity grid in those circumstances. You need an alternative to diesel. Hydrogen presents that alternative where the grid does not meet uh, or does not reach. And so the market in which we're, we're targeting as a company is very much things such as off-grid power uh, and, and moving towards marine applications in, in you know, powering propulsion of ships, auxiliary powers of ships, where, where again, utilising wind farms, traditional renewables doesn't actually uh, work.